Hey all, Chris Stegall here. Uh, today we are going to be doing a quick Pardot how-to. Uh, I'm going to be running through using Engagement Studio to build a little webinar invite journey. So sending out webinar invites, keeping track of who signed up, reminding people um, that the webinar is going on. If they didn't respond to the first invite, reminding those that signed up to attend, um, and keeping track of where everybody is in the process throughout. It's something we've done in the past using completion actions with emails and landing pages. So I figured today I'd run through how to do it in Engagement Studio um, and show you sort of the, the differences between the two processes. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, pop that up on the side, a little too small, much better. Now I should move my monitor over to the other side so it looks like I'm looking at the little screen when I do this. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and get started. We'll head over to Engagement Studio from the marketing section. Go ahead and add an engagement program here. This part is not new to most of you, just the initial setup steps and whatnot. Um, we'll still run through them anyway. So first we're gonna give this a name. Let's call this webinar invite example. Put that in a folder, whatever your folder management process is, your description, your recipient list. Um, so for us, um, I'm basically going to go through and do this kind of bare bones. Um, one of the things I like about Engagement Studio, as opposed to doing things using the other tools in Pardot, is if I'm trying to make a bunch of components that are going to interact, so a landing page with a form that people will be directed to from an email, um, et cetera, it's kind of hard to visualize what all pieces are that you're going to need until you start building it. So you make the landing page and then you go, oh, I'm going to need the form. So then you go to make the form and then you go, oh, I'm going to need some custom fields. So then you go to make the custom fields. And it's kind of a, you know, you're building the blueprint as you build the house. Uh, Engagement Studio is going to let me sort of do the blueprint up front. And then that'll give me a nice breakdown of all of the little components I'm going to need. So all the bricks and ladders and whatnot, then I can go gather those plug them into the engagement studio and run it and it'll all be complete. So the process here is gonna be fairly bare bones. Um, and then I'll show you at the end how I would kind of collect all of the relevant things that I'm gonna to need to create afterwards. And then I'd go into that, which maybe we'll save for a, a separate video. Um, so for now, you know, I'm not gonna add the recipient list here. Uh, if this was our Mambo Merge webinars office hours, our Mambo Merge office hour webinar, uh, the recipient list would be all of the most recent installs between the previous webinar and today's date. Um, suppression list, as you probably remember, is the people that you don't want to be included on this. Um, you have the option to set what business days email or what, yeah, business days emails will be sent, the times, et cetera. Um, and then the option to either allow prospects to only move through the journey once or to move through anywhere between a limited number of times that you set or unlimited times. So depending on your use case, um, you'll adjust those as well. Given the kind of like beginner introductory nature of our Mambo Merge webinar, or Mambo Merge Office Hours webinar, um, I'm not going to set this up to let people move through multiple times. The, the information might be a little bit repetitive. If this were instead a webinar or event built around release notes or updates, then I would want people to be able to attend over and over again because you know every time there's a new release, there's going to be new features that people want to hear about. Once we're into Engagement Studio, you can see here, let me try zooming in a little bit and see if that gives you a little bit. That's nicer. Um, if that's still not big enough, go ahead and make me full screen because um, this you know, might run out of screen real estate here and I'll have to zoom back out a bit. But here you can see our journey, very simple right now. Prospects come in at the top, they finish at the end, and what we need to do is add the meat in the middle. So to kick this off, uh, we're going to want to send people an email invite. So let's add a send email step there. I am going to zoom out a bit so you can see more of these boxes all in one screen. Um, here's where we would select an email template. And like I said, I do have templates already in here, but I want to leave this bare bones for now so you can get a sense of if I was doing this without any assets at the ready. Um, when we want to send the email, so 
typically if you're doing a, a webinar, you know, you know the date that your webinar is going to happen on. You also know the date that you want to start sending out invites. Um, I think our next Mambo Merch office hours is on March 4th. So let's go ahead and make this today. Um, could also do this immediately if we wanted to. Now we are going to send an email to all of those folks. Now what we want to do is delineate between people that opened the email and people that didn't open the email. If they didn't open the email, you know, I'm going to kind of treat it as if maybe they didn't see the email. You know, there's always a chance they weren't interested as well. Um, but on the off chance that it was just buried in a bunch of other emails that day, I want to send them a reminder like, hey, here's another chance to sign up for the webinar. Um, so what we'll do is use a trigger to listen for an event. In this case, that's going to be our email open. Um, again, this email will reference the template that we sent out in the first one. And let's say evaluate this for a maximum of five. Let's call it seven. For a full week, listen for people to open the email. If they don't open that email, they're going to come over here into this little chain. And that is where we're going to set up our second chance email. So they will get a, another email. And we'll have that go out immediately because the trigger is going to be evaluating the trigger seven days. So once that seven days is up, I want the email to go ahead and get sent. If they did open the email, now what I want to do, so now we're on the other side of our initial email. Um, I want to check if they filled out the form and registered. So for this, I could use um, a rule that checks the custom field. If you have a custom field for, you know, registered question mark, yes or no, um, or a field for which events they've registered for, things like that. Um, you could also do this as a trigger. You know, when they complete the form, then we will keep them moving through the process over here. Um, in our case, the form itself has the autoresponder email tied to it. So when they enroll in the webinar, they get an email automatically that says, hey, thanks for enrolling. Here's the date and time again. Here's a link to add it to your calendar. Here's how the online meeting is going to work, et cetera, et cetera. And then they'll get a follow up. Um, so we don't really need to build that in here, but we could if we didn't do it via the autoresponder. So let's pretend the autoresponder doesn't exist. Here I say, hey, go ahead and listen for that form to get filled out. When the form gets filled out, let's say you give them four days. Now, if the form is completed, they're registered. So all we want to do then is send them the reminder email, either the day of or the day before, saying, hey, just a reminder, this event is coming up. You're all enrolled. Here's a refresher on how you're going to want to log in on the day. So for that one, we'd probably do a specific date and say, let's send this the day before. If they opened the email and didn't complete the form, to me, that suggests that they were interested enough to open the email, so they looked at it. I can assume that they are then familiar with the contents. They got to the form page. They didn't complete the form. So in my mind, they are probably not interested in the webinar. I don't want to send the same follow-up email that I'm sending to the people that didn't open the initial and say, hey, in case you missed it, because these people did not miss it. They opened it. They just didn't want to take that next step. So this might be a chance for a follow-up email later. In fact, I think that's what I'll do is have this be an email that goes out after the webinar, say on the 5th, with something like, hey, we noticed that you didn't attend the Mambo Merge office hours. Um, 
here's a quick form on the types of online content you might be interested in. Please let us know what sort of events we can plan or what sort of information you're looking for in the future. And then we can be sure to invite you to the relevant things. We won't bug you about office hours again. Okay, so now let me zoom out a little bit more here so we can see the whole thing in one go. Um, so people get dropped in at the top, all of the new downloads. They're going to get an email today that says, office hours are March 4th. Are you interested in attending? If within the next seven days they open it, we're going to be listening for that form completion. If the form has been completed, they'll get the information email. If the form is not completed, they'll get the email after the event saying, hey, what kind of events can we do in the future? If they didn't open the initial email, they're going to get the second chance email. And then basically on a second chance email, we want to replicate this whole process, right? If they open it, check for the form. If they fill out the form, send them all the information. If they don't, let's follow up. So instead of trying to recreate all of these manually, um, it's super easy to copy and paste. What you do is come up here into the top right, hit select in the top right corner. Then you can grab the step that you want select copy and now when i go to add a new element uh, this little clipboard is going to be highlighted where it was grayed out before and now i can paste that step right in there we'll listen for the form check again pasting that in there and then let's also make sure that they get the confirmation email if they fill out the form if they don't open that second follow-up email, um, let's just route them all the way to the end. Ditto if they open it but don't complete the form. Let's just go ahead and send them to the end here. So now let me zoom out even more, see if we can get all of this journey in one spot. And there it is. So we can see the whole process. And now this is the step I was talking about where it makes it really easy to figure out what assets you're going to need before you go ahead and put anybody in this and, and fire up the program. So I'll get out my pen and paper or open a notepad program on here. And we have email number one. So I'm going to need that email template that's the invite. Email number two is going to be an email template, and that's the follow-up. Hey, in case you missed it, please sign up. Email number three is going to be the template that says, congratulations on enrolling or thanks for registering. Here's all the information about the meeting, what to expect, etc." And email number four is going to be the one that follows up for the people that didn't fill out the form. Hey, let us know what events you're interested in so we don't hit you with more webinars that you aren't interested in registering for. And email four or email five, but labeled four because the first one doesn't have the little parentheses number, is going to be a duplicate of email number three here. So this is going to be the thank you for registering. Here's all your information again. Now, um, obviously, this is like a super simplified version of the process. At any step in here, you could, of course, add actions in terms of adjusting people's scores, um, adjusting the grade based on uh, where they fall in the list. Score is probably a better use here because score, you know, is a measure of your prospect's actions, whereas grade is a measure of their fit to your ideal audience member. Um, but if you have a system where, you know, your ideal audience member is somebody that has attended this event or filled out this form in a certain way, then you could have the form listener or a rule that checks fields to say, hey, let's check their the prospect's title. If their title is X manager, then let's adjust their grade up because that's who our normal buyer is. If it's X associate or something, assistant to X manager, let's adjust their grade down a little bit or put them into a drip campaign that's going to get us exposed to their boss. So there's definitely uh, lots of room to build on this process once you have the bones here. Um, the other thing you could do, you know, is add somebody to a list. Um, if you want to keep a list of people that have attended your webinars, um, then you 
Usually after the registration is complete, I'll add a rule that says add them to a list attended March, attended February. Um, and then if we cover something specific in there or if something comes up in that webinar, you know, oh, I'd love in the future to see functionality that lets me export from Salesforce directly into PowerPoint, which we can do now, but we couldn't do when Mambo Merge first came out then I'll have a record of everybody that was in that meeting when we said, hey, this is on the horizon. Um, we'll let you know when it gets active. Then when it gets active, I can do a list email to the list of people that attended in March and say, hey, that functionality we were talking about is live now. Go in and check it out. Um, so there's a lot you can do once you have the bare bones done. But again, like this is really just enough to get you running, enough to keep you from pulling your hair out when you're trying to do completion actions on every email and landing page and form and trying to remember, uh, they fill out the form on the landing page. Do I want to use page actions from there or use the form completion actions? The right answer is the form, but this way you get to avoid that nonsense altogether. Um, once you're all done, you know, you'll hit start. I'm not going to do that now because I need to go in and put those emails in, uh, but that will be a some content for the future. So that's it. That is a super speedy run through of Engagement Studio and a sort of typical webinar invite process. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, if you have any Pardot questions, Salesforce questions, cloud computing questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Drop them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned both here uh, on the blog, on social media. Um, basically, wherever you prefer seeing us, we'll be there. And uh, until next time, keep working hard, smart, and happy. We'll see you in the cloud. Bye.